Hey y'all, Coach in Fight here, pulling out scripture on the 144,000 from the great book of True Life. Now, we're looking here at the third testament of the Bible, which you can buy online in a copy that looks like this from Amazon or Walmart or wherever. But like we said, this class is going to come from the great book of True Life, from which the third testament is compiled. You can find a link to a PDF of it in the description of this video. It's actually in 12 volumes. So this table here will come in handy if you decide to look it up because we're going to be looking at these certain lessons. Like for instance, the first verse we're going to look at is coming out of volume one as it can be found in teaching one. So what we're going to do is we're going to step down through here looking for 144,000 and just talk about the verses that explain who they are, what their mission is, what their powers are, or their weapons, so to speak, what they're doing right now, and when we can expect to hear from these guys. So stay tuned. Now, the first verse, like we said, comes out of teaching one. It is verse 33, which says, where are the 144,000? Elijah is reuniting them without it being an obstacle that some are in spirit and others incarnated. All will be united spiritually in the divine work. So we learn here that many of the 144,000 are incarnated, meaning they're walking around in the flesh. And that's really important to understand as a lot of times we hear that they are superheroes, we hear that they are angels, but as it turns out, they're actually humans, just like you and I. They just have a divine mission that we're going to hear about here. But notice also that it says Elijah is reuniting them. This is important to understand because like we read in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Malachi, that Elijah returns before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. In other words, before the apocalypse starts, we expect Elijah to come back and, like it says here, reunite the Father's people, some of whom are actually in the spirit world as we speak. But they too will actually take part in this mission because it is a universal mission affecting those in the flesh and those in the spirit world. But now let's look at verse 34. It says, you will be witness to great events, many of which will surprise you, but I will enlighten you with my lessons so that you will never be confused. Study my word, for it will inspire love towards your father and your brethren. It is not necessary for you to belong to the 144,000 to be able to serve the father or be named disciples of the master. Those who form part of this number are just the ones who will open the way and be guardians of my work. Notice that it says that it is not necessary for you to belong to the 144,000 to be able to serve the father or be named disciples of the master. That's just a certain group who have the mission of opening the way being the forerunners, but they're only the first. Any of us can take on this mission. We just have to be united in this divine work. In other words, all we have to do is read and understand the doctrines of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament. And we too can take part in this work. So, in other words, everything that applies to the 144,000 also applies to us. They're just the first ones to get the information with the purpose of sharing it with us. So this is one of the ways you know if you could possibly potentially be one of the 144,000 is simply because you are being aware of this doctrine now while the rest of the world is still asleep or still focused on material things or other things going on in their lives. You are actually being enlightened by these lessons and by these lessons, we're talking about those found in the third Testament of the Bible 
and this document here, the great book of true life. But notice how it says you will witness great events. That's talking about the apocalypse, but it's also talking about the abilities that we will recognize that we have in these times, like being able to control the elements or the weather, being able to heal people and many other abilities that would be considered those of superheroes. But we learn all of that in these lessons. And that's why it's important for the forerunners to be getting it now, because it will be up to them, like it says here, to open the way for the rest of humanity. In other words, you get the information first so that you can share it with others when they're ready to hear it, being as guardians of this doctrine. Again, that's coming out of teaching one. Now let's drop down to teaching three, where we read in verse 69 of the 144,000 chosen by me for the fulfillment of this spiritual mission. A portion will listen to my word through these spokesmen. Another portion will spiritually receive my mandates aided by their gift of intuition and another dwelling in the hereafter will fulfill their mission to mankind in a spiritual manner. So we see here that not everybody will get this word directly. There's some people around the world, as you can imagine, that won't have access to the third testament of the Bible, but they will actually get this information through intuition. It's part of my own testimony. That's kind of how I discovered this book for myself back in 2018. I was hearing verses that seemed like I knew them already talking about the 144,000, but I had never read them before. So while watching a video about the 144,000 on YouTube, I pushed the pause button and typed out the verse in Google in quotation marks and this PDF popped up. You can see the link there if you wanted to search for it yourself or you can find it in the description of this video and download it to your device. All right, the next time we hear about the 144,000 is in teaching 42 down in verse 53, which says, you have become weary due to your constant disobedience. And that is why you are weeping. You have been asleep for a time and your awakening will be bitter. I have promised humanity to send an army of 144,000 beings who will be scattered throughout the world. Humanity is awaiting them because it knows that each one of them is a spokesman and an interpreter of my mandates. So this verse here is addressing all of humanity, talking about how disobedient we are. And that's not entirely our fault. It was our forefathers who abandoned the scripture, abandoned the instructions or the laws as they are called. And as a result, the majority of the world is living lives ignorant of what it is our father expects of us. In other words, we are breaking the laws daily. And this is why there's so much trouble in the world these days. Disobedience to the laws will lead us all to an environment similar to what's going on in Haiti right now, where you have those who are willing to bow to the beast and or make deals with the devil who will sit in their luxury homes with security to protect them from the people around who are disenfranchised from our father altogether because they don't know how to take advantage of the blessings as described in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In other words, the people in power are trying to keep the rest of the world ignorant so that they can keep them enslaved to their money, not understanding that that chaos outside of their window is going to creep into their homes too. But anyway, notice here how the 144,000 are scattered throughout the world. This is important to understand because there's so many church environments popping up, calling themselves camps, where they are inviting people to sell everything they have and move down to where they're at. 
so that they could stand over them just like a regular old preacher does in any church. No, this 144,000 will not be found in groups like that, but will be scattered around the earth in different places with the mission of repopulating the earth. Notice right here where it says humanity is awaiting them because it knows that each one of them is a spokesman and an interpreter of the mandates. Talking about the laws and the instructions. Whereas the people of the dark, those that are trying to enslave us, tell us that we're not supposed to be obeying these mandates or the commandments. But it is the 144,000 who would actually interpret them for us and make sure that we understand what they really mean, just like the Messiah did. They will come to help fulfill the laws. Now, let's drop down to teaching 45 and let's look at verse 27. It says, Today you are listening to me and each individual has recognized his mission. Elijah is an untiring servant of the Lord who is gathering the 144,000 new disciples. The new disciples include 12,000 children from each tribe among this multitude. Those multitudes will receive a sign on their foreheads which mark them as Marian Trinitarian spiritualists. Now, there is a lot going on in this verse. So, let's take it pretty slow. Like, for instance, how it says up here, You are listening to me, and each individual has recognized his mission. Now, we learn in the Third Testament of the Bible that we receive knowledge of our mission once we are obedient to the law. Each one of us has a mission that we signed up for before we were ever incarnated in the flesh. But most of humanity will not fulfill their mission because, like I said, you only become aware of your mission once you have learned to live within the law. So, if you have been living within the law, meaning you're obeying the scriptures, especially the Old Testament where the laws are found, keeping the feast days and the Sabbath days and such, you could probably remember back when you received your mission. Take it from me, it's really subtle when you receive your mission, but you know for sure it is your mission because the paths will be laid out and all of the obstacles will be removed so that you can fulfill that mission. Turns out my mission is making YouTube videos, but I'm sure you're not surprised of that. But anyway, again, it speaks of Elijah as an untiring servant of the Lord who is gathering the 144,000 new disciples. And I remind you guys that he returns before the tragic events come up on the world. And if he follows the same example he did back there with Moses, he actually comes two years before the apocalypse starts. So that's why you guys are hearing about this information now, giving you time to prepare. We don't have much time left, so you definitely want to be taking advantage of what little time we have left to learn to live within the law learn to be charitable, learn to love our father and our brethren, which is the way that we invite the Elijah spirit to come and dwell with us, whether we are 144,000 new disciples or not. Notice down here that he says that there are 12,000 children from each tribe and that they will be marked in their foreheads. This is referring to what we heard back in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy, how we are marked in the feast days. It's so important for us to keep the feast days. Each one of the feast days gives us a different type of blessing and a different lesson. That's why it's important to keep all of the feast days so that we can receive this mark. And then notice this title here, Marian Trinitarian Spiritualist. Well, the spiritualist part is speaking on how the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number will not be materialistic as the rest of humanity. They will be more spiritual minded, focusing on spiritual stuff, whereas the rest of the world is tied up into material things. Then 
it talks about Trinitarian, which speaks about the Third Testament of the Bible, as well as the Old Testament and the New Testament. Those are three separate books given in three eras. We had the Old Testament that came with Moses. And then about 1400 years later, we had the New Testament to come. And then about 1800 years after that, we are getting the Third Testament of the Bible. These three documents make up the trilogy. And it is absolutely necessary that we understand all three. We have to have all three in order to move forward. Anybody who rejects any one of these testaments, whether they receive them in a paper document or spiritually, will not move on and will have to be recycled or should I say will be removed from the planet with the rest of those who reject the scripture. Then it speaks about the Marian part here, which talks about our universal mother. She is actually the Holy Spirit, which we hear about from time to time, but are not really taught on. I mean, we hear about our father, our creator, of course, and we're taught about his son, which is the word. But rarely do we hear anybody speak on the Holy Spirit and who she is and what her role is. Turns out she is represented by the material world, or should I say nature, and it is her responsibility to take care of our physical body. Talking about air, water, even food, all comes from our universal mother, the Holy Spirit. And this group here, the 144,000, will be the first to recognize her. While the rest of the world is disrespecting nature, we would be of the first to learn that our father is a part of everything that he has created. So we will learn to respect nature and our universal mother. It kind of reminds me of that movie, The Avatar, where in the end, nature rose up to help the people. Well, that's going to be the case this time, too, is just that, that nature in that movie is actually talking about our universal mother. But you guys let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. We'll cover more of these verses in what I'll call part two. So in the meantime, check out some of these other videos on the 144,000 and I'll see you in the comment section.